What's up, y'all? What's up? We're at Lake George Escape in Warrensburg. No, in, in Diamond Point. In the, no, Lake George. L yeah, yeah. Lake George Escape in Lake George. Yeah. Oh, got it. It gets a little confusing. We'll elaborate later. So this is their brand new sign. I actually found their old one. It's hiding somewhere in the park. They've changed it recently. It looks an awful lot like a Thousand Trails Park, doesn't it? But it's not actually a Thousand Trails Park. Or is it? I'm so confused. So just so you know, that's Interstate 87 right there. Those bridges, you can make it under those bridges. No problem coming in. RV Life, uh, RV Trip Wizard. They were giving us some weird, odd routing coming in here, but somehow it still had us coming under those bridges. I called them and they said, yeah, just come on down this road. You'll be fine. So, and we were fine. Also notice, how do you tell this isn't a thousand trails? Well, all the potholes are way in the back, not in the front. Look at that, but I gotta, I, I gotta stay on this side. Oh. I wanna show everybody what to expect as they come in here for the first time. This is actually pretty well laid out. And it needs to be. You see how many people that... It's just non-stop people coming in here. We've got multiple lanes. The arrows right here is you've got cabin, RV, through traffic. So when you come in, if you're coming in with an RV, you're going to come into the middle lane. You're going to stop there. Anybody that's already been here, they have their own lane dedicated. It go right on in, right past all the people that are checking in. The people that are getting RVs, they'll be all the way to the left because they're both gonna go inside the lodge to check in. And you stop right here by the mini golf. Well, we'll talk more about the mini golf in a moment. Look at this big, beautiful welcome flag. Doesn't it look like thousand trails? So after you stop and you park, look at that. Walk to check in at the lodge right this way. This is a very epic park store and lodge. So this is the, the wagon that they pull around. They don't actually have a tractor for it. They use a truck. They can get quite a few people on there. They play some music. They usually go a couple of times. And I guess you're not going to go with us? You're going to go on that? <laughs> so we call it the Hey Hey Ride, even though that's typically from another brand of campground. It's still fun to yell hey hey every time we go somewhere. Let's head into the park store and see how you check in. So this is the front. If you get here late, they'll have your stuff in the box right there. I have actually seen people hanging out up here, sitting in these chairs, even uh, working. There was somebody up here working from their laptop, from the Adirondack chairs in the Adirondack Mountains. <laughs> nice to meet you, sir. So you come in here and you turn to the right. They got a bunch of firewood for you. You're gonna get in line here. Does this not remind you of going to Disney World and getting in line for a ride? Let me tell you why. 
This campground has 574 sites, including 64 cabins. So that's 510 RV camp sites. So yeah, on a Friday night, they may have a line of people looking to check in. They've got all kinds of games, camping supplies, everything that you need here. ATM, ice, cooler bags, temporary bag. Oh, we should get another. We're almost getting too many bags now for grocery shopping. I want to have some colored flames, some candy, some cars, some stuffed animals, which they even have their own little thing on set and days where it's kind of like Build-A-Bear. You can stuff your bear and buy some cute clothes for it. We got probably something like a citronella candle. Like I said, stuff you need for your RV, they got you. Look at all this stuff. It's great. You need some pillows and blankets? You want to have a pillow that reminds you of the Adirondack Mountains? They got you. Tiki torches, chairs, fold up backpacks, live bait, milk, cheese, bacon, butter. Look at all these drinks. So much drinks. And this is what I love. I hardly ever see a full selection of caffeine and caffeinated caffeinated drinks like what I like. But they got me squared away here. All kinds of amazing cups, pool noodles, inflatables, cooking stuff. There's even little barbecues, chips, treats, burger flippers. You need to play some Uno while you're here or some phase 10. Skip bow. Kira has really been wanting this bug catcher. If you've ever watched the channel Living Small Dreaming Big with Lindsay and Stuart, their daughter Audrey has a bug catcher like this and Kira has not stopped talking about it ever since. She wants a bug catcher like Audrey has. You need a unique bottle opener? They got you. You want to know if you're level or not? They got you. You need a door latches? My goodness. They got you. <laughs> Ices? They got you. Coffee? Cappuccinos? Look at that. We got doormats, folding tables, little bear trinkets, Christmas ornaments with RVs on them. They got you. So you got an idea for a new campground for us? Yeah, I was thinking we would build one in upstate New York with like 500 campsites. Sounds like it might be kind of difficult. Actually, it'll be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Actually, it's gonna be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. So right around the corner from the, where you check in is a bathhouse. And the bathhouse is pretty unique here in the fact that they've separated the showers from the bathroom. And there is, I think, I counted 15 showers over here. It's a lot. So let's go check, take a look at this. Can you say the ADA one is head bathroom? Yes, the ADA one does have a toilet and a sink in it. So many showers. So this one, you get a hook on the door. When you lock it, it'll actually show that somebody's in here and it's occupied. There's another hook, a little seat. These shower curtains are interesting. I feel like they're just not quite big enough. And a pretty basic shower. Here comes the wagon ride, the hey hey ride. I see Kira. This is what the ADA one looks like. Pretty much all opened up, plus a diaper changing. Now one of the things we've noticed is every other state ADA has handhelds, but in New York, they do not. What's the deal with that? Also right up here in the front behind the park store, you've got basketball court and then two tennis ball courts. And now let's go check out what they call the fun house. So the fun house is an arcade, and if you want to play mini golf, you'll come in here to sign up for your mini golf. Hey, it's operating again. This arcade is a fun blend of old and new video games, as well as pinball. I mean, look at this. That's a classic. A much more modern one here where you can earn tickets. Not one, but two Batman. Now this is a classic. One of the original video games, Asteroids. It's amazing that they've got this thing and in such good shape. 
And when you're ready to leave the park, you're gonna come around the tennis courts, go around the park store and bathhouse, and come out like that Jeep right there. And it will just open right up for you. They're well illuminated too. At night, those gates are bright red, so you know where they're at. Just past the tennis court on your way out, here is a dump station because about half of the campsites are uh, water and electric only. So this comes in very handy. Fortunately, I missed it and it's locked up, but this is the Adirondack building. It's kind of a activity center. They do things in here like crafts, games, watch movies, and then they have more of it just kind of extended out here in the front. They'll tell you. So they're constantly sending out text messages. They have like one number that the messages will come from to whoever is the phone number registered on the reservation. And it will tell you things like, two o'clock, the water slide is open, which is a big inflatable water slide, or movie is about to play in the Adirondack building. So you'll kind of have an idea of where to go. Or you can come out here and check the board. After you come in through the gate right there, just past the Adirondack building, and by the way, this is the shuttle here, and the shuttle will take you to go tubing. I think it's $10 per run for them to take you upriver so you can tube, or they'll take you into Lake George Village. I'm not, I think that's free. I, mean, I have to check. Tanya and I were talking about going and taking the, the trip, but I had work today, so I couldn't uh, step away to do that. But after you come in, you're gonna see this cool tractor that the kids can climb on and you can take photos with. And then there's a huge park map right there showing all the campsites and with their old numbers because they just renumbered everything. So we got put in this front part. These are some newer 65 foot long sites. You can see our RV down there. And these are a pretty decent size. They're easy to get into. When they messaged me, they texted me ahead of time and asked if we had any special requests. And I told them I was more concerned with easy to get in and out of sites than I was with a fancy site like lakefront or riverfront. So they accommodated us. They got us into this nice site. We've got plenty of space for the RV and the truck. Take a quick look here. Now I really like what they've done. Almost every one of their pedestals is like this. They've built them up. They're definitely prepared for like mass flooding. Everything's in really good shape. I'm not real sure about the cable. I probably never will know if the cable works. Decent water hookups. And then you've got your sewer connection. Now, as far as campsites go, they only have two different kinds, either with, uh, with sewer or without. I don't believe they have any 30 amp sites at all. So towards the back, it's about a 50-50 split. You can actually see it on the Thousand Trails site. Wait, this isn't a Thousand Trails park. You can see it on the Thousand Trails site, which ones have sewer and which ones don't. And from there, everything else, water and electric, and probably even cable, if that's something that you like. And pretty much every site has a picnic table and a fire ring. After somebody comes out of the, uh, the campsite, the crew, the rangers, they will come through and they will do this with the, the fire pits. They'll just kind of stand them up and clean up the area. Now, right after you come in, if you're not going into the uh, first camping loop here where we're camped, you could go that way or you could go straight through on the other side of the stop sign because this side is kind of a pedestrian only area. So if you go this route here, you're only gonna be headed for the campgrounds that are in our loop. They don't want any motorized traffic beyond that point right there. Unless of course you're going to one of these smaller pull-throughs right here, which have been heavily used through the 4th. They're just empty right now. We're... Well, what we're gonna do, we're gonna end the video over here in this area. This is kind of the amenity area. And this is a one-way route over here. They have RV sites, annuals. Interesting. Sounds like something they would do at Thousand Trails. Now we've reached a part where there's just too many forks in the road and there's no way that I can show you everything. So we'll just kind of summarize. Right here we've got laundry. And let me go inside and check that out. By the way, they've got plenty of these and usually they're stocked. A little surprise that one's not stocked. Usually they're taken care of. And there's usually trash bins all around this park too. So here's what the laundry room looks like. They have got a total of eight dryers and six washers. Unfortunately, it looks like one of them's broken right now. They do not take any quarters. You can use the app, you can use your credit card with a chip or a slider on the bottom. 
I thought the price was kind of funny, but they're finagling that price since you don't have to use quarters. They can go outside of what would be used if it was a quarter. They got several uh, tables for folding. They've even got this uh, sink over here. Pretty decent. And there are two laundry rooms that are near bathhouses in each case. Across the street from the laundry, we have what's probably the smallest bathhouse. It's got four individual showers and then the men's and women's bathroom on either side. What I like about these is the heat lamp. I'm always a big fan of heat lamps. Oh, that light bulb's out. Let me see, check another one. Here we go, much better look. So this one though, like very minimal on the hooks, nothing to set your stuff down on here. Uh, when I use this shower, I put like my phone up here in the window. I feel like they got these curtains at <laughs> discounted bulk rate. They're almost all the same. See if there's any. Oh, there's a couple more hooks back here. So that's that's not too bad. There are a lot of dumpsters up at the front, but it is pretty cool that they have actually spread out and put a few dumpsters throughout the rest of the campground. So you do not have to take it all to the front. We appreciate that. So up this hill right here, we have an old cabin Jacob's in the woods. House. It's Jacob's house. If, if you're a fan of Lost, it's Jacob's house. <laughs> uh, this is actually where the dog park is. It's up on top of the hill and it is an absolutely epic dog park. Let's just start right here. Daisy has known to come and appreciate this right here because she can get her water. She knows to just walk right over here and get a drink. And then there's a dog bath right here. If you want to bathe your pup, hello. And get him walking right up this and you've got a handheld this is probably the only handheld shower at the whole campground i've got a captive audience hello how are you doing today <laughs> interesting that you've got a our typical stinky slinky running off of the dog bath now i say that this is probably the second best dog park but it's pretty close up there. Our favorite is still the Madison Golf and RV Resort in Madison, Florida. It felt like a half a football field dedicated for big dogs to run and they did have it divided into two. This one is huge. You have two entrances right off the front. So this morning when I brought Daisy up here, I literally I asked the gentleman that was on this side, do you want me to go on the other side? He said, yeah, that'd be helpful to me. So I said, sure, that's fine. And you've got it separated. I call them airlocks because I'm into sci-fi. Look at this captive audience here. You're good dogs. Yes, you are. Oh, you're just adorable. Yes, you are. So you got a bench on this side and a bench on that side. There is some lights. I haven't been up here after dark yet. You've got dog poop station. Now this is the smaller one. This is still huge. And then they're over in the larger park, which makes like this zigzag shape going back. Plenty of room. Daisy's been in there, made friends with other big dogs, and they can just take off running. And then back over here, you've got the obstacle course, which we actually got Daisy to do three things. I've never gotten Daisy to do anything before. And there's a couple of benches for you to sit on and another dog poop station over there. And if you're in the back of this uh, smaller area, you can enter through the airlock and then make your way over into the other one. Look at that, there's two or three of the dog poop stations. So this is probably the highest point in the entire campground. Interesting that they built it up like that. Now in the beginning of the video, I stated I found the original sign. There's a video that came out about this park seven months ago. It had that sign at the front. I found you. I found you hiding over there. Overall, it looks like they're trying to just kind of get all the parks on brand with their signs. So. I kind of understand, but I like that one. That kind of reminds me of like old school Disney World. I don't know, it's neat that I found it. So there are 64 cabins at this campground. This morning, the staff actually got us inside of two different cabins. Mm -hmm. So you can go ahead and check that out right here. This is a premium lofted cabin. And we got access to share with everybody. Look at that, they got fire ring out here, picnic table, Adirondack chairs. What a coincidence, we're so close to the Adirondack Mountains. Ceiling fan up here on the patio. Let's take a look inside. Nice and cool in here. Welcome to our camp. It's got a mini split air conditioner. TV on the wall. Looks like this bed is like a futon or something. 
So you get a coffee maker, toaster, you got a split sink. Some cool stairs. Dishes. That there's stairs. There's stairs? Yeah, there's stairs. They got cups and mugs, paper towels. And stairs. <laughs> Kira really cares about those stairs. Pots and pans. I found the way to get up here. Dish wrap. There's even dish soap and a sponge. Hey, tell us what how you got up there. Uh, there's stairs down like through the way down there. Are you sure there's stairs? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure there's stairs, but the stairs are short, so it'd be hard for you. To get. Interesting. They actually have the water heater, propane, and electric, just like a lot of RVs have. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Now, how did you get up there again? The stairs. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Well, before I look at the bathroom, why don't you show me the stairs? The stairs! Hey, there's stairs! If, it'd be hard for you to get up the stairs. It is very narrow. Okay, I'm noticing something about the bathroom. There's stairs. <laughs> there's no stairs in the bathroom here. Yeah. There's but, a bathtub. So there's like a bath uh, floor mat looking thing. But, well, I guess there's no towels. But wait, they just walked out with towels. Did you see that? Ooh, look at that. There's a light directly over the bathtub. Maybe people take this. I think I think that the, I think that they just needed to take those towels to wash. And here's the bedroom. Master. Oh, and there's another AC in here. And one more hanger in this one. One more hanger? Yes. Two-sided closets. So you have a light over each side of the bed with your own dedicated switch on each side. With pillows. You got a remote right there for the pillows air conditioner. And pillows. And a trash can. You have a trash can. You got blinds behind you. And a trash can. Oh, and an alarm clock too. How cool. And a trash can. I'm gonna try to get up these steps. Oh my goodness. It's a bit narrow. Uh -oh. <laughs> this is a great spot for the kids to crawl around and play up here. No mattresses or anything up here. There's extra bedding up here in a tub. Hi. Hello. Oh. I found the towels. Mom, Tanya told me where the towels were. Ice cube makers. Refrigerators. All right, y'all. Knives. Why don't we move on and check out the next one? So over some of the other campgrounds we've been to, this place has a one-up in the fact that it has linens. That is a big deal, Holyfield. So this is a cabin premium. It's got the fire pit again out here and a picnic table. Four Adirondack chairs, two up here on the patio, and then two by the fire pit. So as the ceiling fan out here. All right, let's take a look inside here. Cabin premium. It's got a bigger TV on it. I'm loving this couch, a sectional couch. I don't know, it just feels like a place where you could hang out on a vacation. I like it nice and cool in here. Look at the stove, that's sweet. Toaster, coffee maker. Oh, they have an electric can opener. It's been a while since I've seen one of those. This one doesn't have the loft, but it's got a bunk room. Nice size bed on the bottom. I mean, you really, if you had two couples, you could have a couple stay in there if they needed to. I also, I noticed some of the interesting details other people might not notice, but the other one had like a more shallow sink and this one has a deeper sink. Actually, that's our sink that we had in our house before we sold our house. I like their, their uh, shower curtains with the trees, yeah. like in the fog. Hello, oh, medicine cabinet, nice. Nice lights, extra toilet paper. Here's the bedroom, air conditioner's working nice. A TV on the wall, place to hang up your clothes. Hi. Top of the There's a car. Towels. Top of the car. 
here in the squid soup, so I also got the beans. Yeah. I need hot soup. <laughs> you, you want people to put heart-shaped ice cube trays in their cabins? Yeah. So the people would think that this place is fashionable. Fashionable? This is a nice size. I could see the grandparents and the kids stand here. Yeah? I so could could like my parents? Yeah. And then they could have the girls stay in the bunk room? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. So be nice. You call the bottom bunk because it's nice and big? But me to just even company. <laughs> do, do, do you approve? Yes. Okay. This is nice. We approve. Once again, the fact that there's lemons is a huge deal. Yep. How about make me famous? Oh, they're famous now. How about famous? <laughs> Here's another one of the dump stations. This is back here by the second laundry room and another bathhouse. There's the laundry room right there. And it's almost identical inside, so I don't need to show you that. The bathhouse, though, is a little bigger. Speedboat! As you can see, we've got more dumpsters right here. And then we've got eight showers in one building, and bathrooms in the middle, and then laundry right down there. And these showers are almost identical to the last ones I showed you, so there's no need for me to go in there and take a look again. So just wanted to point out that these bathhouses in the back do not have any ADA because they're kind of built up steps. So the only, there's just two ADA showers and they're at the very front at the park store. Now over this way, it's like a whole other area of the campground. It's one way in and one way out over this bridge right here. There's a pond over here. I figured I'd drive over here and show it to you. Let's drive down Bella Way. Shout out to Bella. Bella! From Nursing Our Travel Bug. We're always thinking about you. Kaylin's always talking about Bella. They're good friends. We got some pull through campsites back here. I'm not sure. That one looks like it's got a sewer connection. And here's the pond right over here. And I've seen a young man fishing over here. A bunch of lily pads with some pretty flowers. I love this campsite. It's an amazing campsite. Got a few cabins back here. I'm not going to drive this entire camping loop. That would take way too long. It's literally not really any amenities back here it's just more campsites like i said there's some cabins back here too you can tell like this is an annual because they take really nice care of their campsite ridiculously nice that's super nice as you can see not all sites are huge not all sites are big and i'm pretty sure these are some of the ones that do not have sewer connections and that sign back there which I'll show in just a minute. The river is right behind this, and they don't want people to climb into the river from these campsites because they're trying to protect the embankment from eroding. Now these sites over here are backed up to what's called the frog pond. And if you could see back through there, there's a bunch of lily pads. Let's see if we can check one of these out. I have not pulled into one of these yet. I like the site next door. Nice, long, deep site. You see, I think they don't have a sewer connection back here. Still a picnic table, fire ring, really cool power pedestal with a big cement stand. Huh. Let me go ahead and turn those off for you. This one doesn't have quite the clear shot to the frog pond, but I bet if I hold the camera up, I can show you. The frog pond. You can see RVs all around this frog pond. All of this is within, it's all within this campground. Well, that mountain's not in this campground, but you know, you get what I mean, right? The frog pond's in the campground. Just for your awareness, they've been talking about old numbers and new numbers. And the time we were here, they put these posts up. The numbers were on the power poles. They're still there. When you check in, they will give you the old site number and the new site number. Well, there's the new site number. If you look on the Thousand Trails map, you'll see the new site now, but why? It's not even a thousand trails park. <laughs> this is what the river access looks like. There's a couple of little spots like this where you're allowed to go enter and exit the river. Let's take a look at a site that is backed right up to the river and you can see the sign I was talking about. So there's the river. This is the Shroon River, S-C-H-R-O-O-N. And they do not want me to get down in the water to prevent this bank from eroding so but there are several 
points where you can get in and out that's easy it's got a nice little flow to it nothing too serious but yeah people come out here and they do kayaking canoeing and tubing on this river pretty good size sites back here like i said you got all the way up to 50 amp you got water you just don't have a sewer hookup back here this is the boat launching area and you see some kids are enjoying the water right here great place to enter and get out with your tube it says uh no swimming but we're not swimming right we're waiting and you've got your kayak and canoe rentals over here i have not seen any prices for those yet i think they just opened them up today and while there is no bathhouse back here they put some porta potties out in this area if i had to guess so we've got no sewer out here whatsoever so that's probably why they don't have any bathhouses either and so that's why they probably put the porta potties back here so I can still get some camping going on, but it's a little bit, you know, not quite as, uh, what's the word I never understand how to use? B bouge? Bougie. Bougie. It's less bougie out here. <laughs> <laughs> and there's more dumpsters. I, I think I get the idea of what it means to say bougie, I think. Bougie is like the spoiled section. Okay, yeah, we're in the spoiled section. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> a couple more sites back up to the river and here's another river access i mean if you wanted to like take it super easy you could literally get in with your tube here and then just float right down to that little boat ramp super easy barely an inconvenience so right here behind this bear you can see the chairs for the beach we'll swing around these trees right here and check, take a look at the beach all right so right here is the beach you can actually try to cart up here a little bit that is the beach. It's definitely not anything spectacular, but it's a nice extra place for, you know, people to come get in the water and sit out here and relax and cool off. I don't know that this is really sand so much as it's like a dust or a dirt. The water is uh, cool. I could tell that the swimming pool here was heated because I went in the pool and then I went in the river and the river definitely felt colder. If you want to watch my goofy shenanigans of me getting all wet, you'll have to uh, <laughs> have a daily vlog where I said I, I didn't let it stop me was mm -hmm. the title of the vlog. The rain, don't I, let it stop. I didn't let it stop me and I went and I just got so tired of the rain and I just went out and got as wet as possible with the GoPro camera. <laughs> that was a goofball. Back to our review. I think now is the time to take Tanya into the Big Top Circus. But I don't want to join the circus. It's not a circus. Ooh. I did see a magic show in there though. So if you want to park at the Big Top Tent, this is the only way to get close to it with your car or your go-kart. That is the Big Top Tent right there. I don't know what's going on, but something's going on. I guess I'll go poke my head in and see what kind of craziness is going on. I'll go walk into the big top tent and be a part of the circus and see what's going on for you. You ready for this? 36. It's Bingo. And Bingo was their name. So this is the big top tent. And this is the small top tent. I've literally seen where they'll have separate functions. Over here in the little top tent, they'll say it. In the little top tent, we're doing crafts today. Or this is over in the big top tent. And it's been different things. It's not just bingo. I'm not kidding. I poked my head in there the other day and there was a legit yeah. magic show going on on the stage. There is so much going on at this campground. This is the big field where they just kind of have activities out here. But can you guess what this field's all about? That's right. This is the septic area <laughs> for the campground. So it makes a great area for them to play dodgeball, water balloon fights. Got the pool over there, the bar and restaurant, the big top tent, small top tent, outdoor movie theater. And yes, they do use this. I have seen them playing movies over here. I think they were playing dodgeball. That's funny, I just referenced dodgeball. And this is the water slide. It only goes up for about an hour to an hour and a half a day. It's all inflatable, splashes water all over it. And from what I could tell, rain or shine, can't believe I missed my opportunity to come out here when I was feeling crazy. Y'all look at that view. Is that not amazing? It's just a beautiful area. Wish it wasn't so muggy. So let's talk real quick about our, like our opinions about this campground, mm -hmm. pros and cons. What did we like? What did we not like? What stood out to us? I think it's very pro family. It's pro fun. I like the fact that they have a restaurant. Yeah. I, I'm not sure 
<laughs> Bug was in my mouth. Uh, I like the pizza. The pizza was delicious. Yeah, nachos have been great. Yeah, the, the nachos tasted, they smelled amazing. I didn't taste them. Any cons for you? As Does far she... as the bathrooms go, that the ADA doesn't have a handheld would be the only thing that if I was using the restroom, showers, whatever, I would prefer to have a handheld if I were disabled and needed it. Disappointing that they don't have that here for the people with disabilities. There's a lot of flies. Yeah, oh my and goodness. Whatever. What is going on? <laughs> so, for people with disabilities, I kind of have a disability, but. It's something that we're aware of right. that would be useful and we think about it from that perspective. Right. For other people, I can imagine that it would be something that would be sad. Not, not yeah. sad, but. If you have one in your RV, that's it. Everything else is great. I love it. Our kids are playing and they have, there's lots of friends. Kira is going from campsite to campsite, eating with everybody, playing with everybody, coming home looking like a totally different child. Coming home with other people's clothes on. Yes, other girls are giving her their, their clothes that are too big or whatever and she just comes home not dressed as she left. So <laughs> she's having a great time. I wish I could make friends like Kira. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely a pro is that this park feels safe and the staff are definitely on top of making sure this is a family friendly. Yes. And they have a lot of staff. That's another so much positive. Staff. The staff here are amazing. They actually have a work camp program where they're actually bringing uh, young people from other countries that are working here yeah. to get experience in the States. Kaylin said some of her friends are from a different the country and they're actually working here. Yep. The young lady that checked us out today when you bought the little uh, bug catcher thing for Kira, yeah. she said she's from Mongolia. Yeah. She's here she's for the like, summer to she work. She wants to look at our channel. The staff, so the staff is a real positive. It makes this park amazing. The amount of activities they have, they're constantly keeping everybody busy. The kids can roam freely and have a good time and we don't have to worry about it. Cons, it would have been nice if they had gotten the pool fixed, but I understand that they couldn't. So the pool closes at 6. I thought it was for various different reasons, but it turns out it's the pool is actually broken and they have staff in there to keep everyone off the steps until they can get it fixed. Mm -hmm. And because of all the rain, they haven't been able to get it fixed. Mm -hmm. So that makes more sense. They were trying to work really hard putting staff by the pool so they could keep it open and functioning and try to keep it from breaking further. Because if it did break, the pool would be gone for the summer. <laughs> little tiny bugs and like a hornet. I would say things that they could work on. Obviously, this would cost a lot of money, but a hot tub. Oh, yeah. Hot tub would be nice. We, we've but seen better hot tubs at lesser parks. I mean, Thousand Trail Park. I mean, lesser parks. <laughs> we've also had nicer bathrooms at other yes. lesser parks. Yeah, I. the showers aren't air conditioned. So when it's muggy and hot out here and then I go and I make more muggy hotness while I'm taking a hot shower, sure, I come out cleaner, but man alive, it's hard to <laughs> put your shirt back on <laughs> when it's not air conditioned in the bathroom. Mm. Am I boo bougie? <laughs> yes, you are so bougie. <laughs> if they could have had some air conditioning or something with those showers in the bathhouse, that would have been helpful. Mm -hmm. The cabins are really nice. The fact that they have linens in the cabins was amazing. Yeah. Even though that's not something that we used while we were here, we know from experience that that can be really annoying when you're coming into a place like this and nobody told you or all, all the photographs show that they had linens and then you get here and there aren't any linens. Mm -hmm. So then what are you supposed to do? Run to Walmart, I guess. Another recommendation that I would have for the park too, since this is very similar to Camp Margaritaville. Mm -hmm. I mean, very similar. Oh yeah, definitely a gaga ball. Pick. Yes. The girls are like, that's what they're missing. They need a gaga ball pit or a bouncy pillow. One of the two, I or think, both. I think the gaga ball pit would be something cheaper that they could implement much yeah. faster. I think they could have both because it's a pretty big yeah. campsite. And that's the kind of stuff that I think would put this park over the top because our girls will ask to go back to those kinds of places. Yes. Like, when are we going back to that place? Yes. But I still think they're gonna have good memories from this place they because are. they loved it. They had volleyball. Kaylin wanted to learn how to play volleyball and she found some kids that were doing it and she started playing with them, so. Yep, we just wanted to talk right now. We're gonna finish up the video over by the playground and the bar restaurant and the volleyball area. But they usually have like a DJ or some music or something over there and it's usually loud. So I said, let's just talk about everything right now before we head in there. Mm -hmm. So here we go. Let's go check out the rest of that Might stuff. Let's lose some daylight. 
next Maybe. time we see you. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully we lose some of these bugs. Yes. Oh my oh, goodness. By the way, these campers right here, they're on the other side of that frog pond. You kind of see through there. There's not as many lily pads over on this side. There you go, some empty sites where you can actually see the frog pond. It's beautiful when you got somebody that's got lights on over there. Coming up on the playground here, we've actually got horseshoes right here behind the playground. Three different horseshoe tracks. Playground actually has some decent sand if you want to build sand castles. As usual, lots of kids. I even see Kira up there. Looks like they're about to organize some kind of fun game. And here is parking for the go-karts right behind the bar and restaurant and the playground. This is kind of back where we started over that way. Sounds like somebody might be doing some karaoke. They made this narrow, but that's probably because they want you to slow down as you come into park. Rocks out. It's amazing. I've never seen big rocks this big. Yeah, she keeps talking about how big these rocks are in this park. Like alien rocks. And those rocks are fake rocks for the kids to climb on. This rock is a real rock. We've got gold panning and the pool area. They've got a grassy area kind of overlooking the pool. I still say that should be a hot tub. There's the shuffleboard. And there's the pool. Not entirely certain what happened to the steps. The whole side over there is stairs, but it's somehow broken. And if anybody goes on those steps, they can further break the pool. So they've had two, one or two staff sitting out there to watch it and make sure that there's nobody. They're not considered lifeguards. They don't consider this to be a lifeguarded pool. The staff is literally just there to make sure nobody further breaks the pool. This has been a pretty cool hangout spot that I've never seen them use while they were here. I would totally add a propane fire pit here and make this a more hip and happening spot. How's that for some golden hour lighting? All right, I'm just gonna walk around, finish this up real quick, and then we will end the video back here at the restaurant, see if we can get some food. So this building, that used to be the rec room. Apparently that's just being used for some storage now. And down here they had a kiddie pool and they turned it into a sandbox. I was kind of bummed to see that. But I don't hear a whole lot of complaints other than us there. I'm sure the kids enjoy coming in there and being able to play. Now I caught Kira, she'd been in there playing and then they put water in this kiddie pool here and she was using that to clean off all the sand that was on her. And over here, oh and I, I still have not figured out what this place is. It says lost and found. Honey Bear's Fun Center. I don't think this is used anymore. I think this is all storage. But I guess that's lost and found now. So we got the volleyball over here, which Kaylin has been at a lot, but she apparently has kind of chilled out on that. I'm just loving the views. Our last bit of sunshine as the sun's going down on the trees over here. Beautiful. So this is that walkway that I showed you guys from the front where you can't drive back here. This is like a pedestrian area only. And it's one of the reasons that we really like this park because we can let the kids run freely over here and not have to worry about them getting run over by car. They can be over here playing volleyball and going to the playground. So they've got Frisbee golf. I'm not sure why they've got it all rounded up. Maybe they just bring it out at certain times. And this doesn't stay out here all the time either. The cornhole gets put away at night. And then we've got the uh, Jenga that's fallen down over here. And they have a section over here where they do s'mores. I'll show you that and then I'll head back to Tanya. Giant Jenga. And I've caught, I've caught them. <laughs> caught them like they were doing something wrong. The staff was out here doing s'mores. This is their little fire pit they had set up. And they had all the supplies out here so the families could come over here and enjoy s'mores together. Man, I just cannot get enough of this golden hour. I feel like I need a picture. Just love it. When you see a bunch of bicycles stacked up, you can just tell somebody's having fun. And they got a couple little soccer goals out here. Dog poop stations all over this area. You see the big top tent over there. Just a great campground. So as I walk back to Tanya, I'll give you the rundown of the whole joke with uh, thousand trails this isn't a thousand trails park but it's owned by i believe it's called equity lifestyle is the company that owns thousand trails this is a trails collection park so if you are a thousand trails member and you add on the trails collection then you can use this campground added on to your thousand trails membership it is thousand trails because they have a thousand trails membership specialist here they're ready and willing and waiting for you to come by a thousand trails membership right here at this park but you can see the 
the signs that it belongs to Thousand Trails all over the place. This is one of those parks though, I guess, I don't know if you call this one an encore, I think it's considered an encore park. This is one of their money makers. There's only a certain amount of spots available to Thousand Trails members. The rest of these spots are retail and they are making their money off of that. This is a highly desirable park and they're doing a great job managing it and they're making it a place where people want to come to. There is a lot of people coming here from Boston, New York City, to get away to the Lake George area. And with 574 campsites here, they're doing a terrific job of being ready for everybody that wants to come and check in. So would I recommend that you come and check out this campground? Absolutely. If you have the opportunity to come to Lake George Escape and stay here, take advantage of it. If you're a Thousand Trails membership, if a Thousand Trails member and you can get in, it's totally worth it. They will be very accommodating to you. They've got great campsites for you as a Thousand Trails member. If you just want to come up here and stay at a retail rate, I think it's still worth it. This is an excellent park. As our kids would say, since they, they rate Camp Margaritaville very high, this is right up there with Camp Margaritaville. There's just a few differences, but overall, our kids are going to walk away remembering this park as much as they remember Camp Margaritaville in Florida. That's a high honor. That's a high honor coming from RVFamily.life to say that this park is on that plateau. Everybody that works here, you guys are absolutely amazing. We, uh, we've we loved staying here. Hopefully we can come back here and check it out someday. We've met a lot of friends here, lifelong friends that we're gonna remember forever. Let's go see what we can get for some food. We've got a live singer over here playing guitar. Hopefully I don't get in trouble with any uh, copyright claims from the music. My name is Annabelle. My name is London. And and we're really big fans. Awesome. Yeah, we follow everything. Thank you so much. We really appreciate that. Did you uh, watch our channel before we got here or did you see our stuff when you, once you uh, got here? I've watched your channel for a couple of years now. Really? Yeah. That's amazing. I saw you like guys setting up or whatever. That is awesome. Very cool. Well, thank you for coming and telling us that you uh, like our stuff. Yes. Thank you so much. Very cool. Bye. Bye. Cool. All right, y'all, we got some food from, it's called River Provisions. And Tanya got a buffalo chicken wrap with french fries. And I got the pulled pork nachos. I've had these before and I like them. So we are going to close out with this. That'll be the end of this video and this review. Life happens. And bugs in your face. Don't let it stop you. Stay fresh, cheese bags. One, two, three. Happy hour. Ain't a hang around for a fireworks show. Out of heaven, stop.